How are we doing folks? Well, today I am going to tackle removing the engine from the van. The old engine, obviously. So, um, I've had to make a bit of space in the garage, as you can see. Uh, it's by no means tidy, but there's a bit more walking room now. Uh, turned the engine crane around as well too, and um, yes, yeah, so we're pretty alright in that front. Um, First of all, what we need to do is we actually need to prepare the um, prepare the old engine to be removed. So that basically means uh, draining fluids and coolant, um, disconnecting electrical wiring, disconnecting everything from the gearbox as well too, because the gearbox is actually going to come out with the engine in this instance. And um, yeah, basically uh, we um, we have to just basically go through everything before we undo any engine mount bolts, and then we lower the engine out underneath the van and we drag it out. So. Here's what we're looking at here. Now, in my infinite wisdom, I forgot to charge my camera last night, both batteries. So uh, I have the uh, camera actually plugged in at the moment. Anyway, it does the trick. So, um, yeah, basically you can see now the, uh, the, the van's up on axle stands, giving me enough room to be able to drag the engine out from underneath. Um, and uh, we'll use the engine crane to lower it out the bottom. And uh, we'll lower it onto a dolly. Um, if you go back on my previous videos, you'll see I already made up a dolly, um, and I also have a um, uh, yeah, can't remember what I was going to say. But anyway, we, we'll we'll start by doing that. We we'll start by wire, uh, labeling up all the wiring connections and start taking them off. That's a nice clean work, and we'll go from there. Okay, so we're staring down the barrel of this old school AAZ engine here. This is the wiring harness for it. It's a bit different when you look back at the uh, wiring harness for the um, for the, the uh, AHU engine which is going in here. Not all of these en wires are even needed to run the engine. There is one wire that's needed to actually keep it running and that's this one here. And that goes onto the fuel cutoff solenoid which is down in here. Um, just down behind there, in th on top of the fuel pump anyway basically. But um, everything else is just uh, sensors and then just one for the glow plugs as well too. I mean you'd obviously have to heat the glow plugs. But either out or use a kind of easy start, and she'd start. So it'd be quite easy to get this engine running on the garage floor by comparison to the AHU. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tidy up this mess here as well too. Um, my intention is to make a kind of a junction box for all of the uh, wiring to go onto. I mean that's a disaster. Um, I'll take the bonding lead off the engine as well too. There's a grounding strap that goes down there. You see that down there. So we need to remove that and that just goes off to the negative terminal of the battery and uh, that's uh, then everything else is grounded off um, grounded off the body so um, yeah we'll uh, I suppose the next thing we'll do is get that off anyway then we'll drain down the coolant, disconnect the fuel and um, go from there well folks, uh, things are a bit different in the garage today simply because of the fact that I have a bit of assistance in the form of uh, Decky down below uh, he's a uh, he is currently removing the half shafts um, while I'm doing the easy work up here. See the way I delegate. <laughs> so uh, basically, what we have here now is that was a that was the cold start um, the cold start lever that went onto the inside of the pump down there. Um, I have the accelerator cable off. The fuel pipes are off. Um, banjo fitting screw back in there. Um, all the coolant pipes are out of the way. The wiring is off and the coolant system is drained off. I have done, in a previous video, uh, I've already drained the oil out of the engine anyway. Um, I did that when I was changing the sump, obviously. So, um, and the other, the annoying thing is, is the um, when I took off the uh, vacuum pipe, well, the, a little bit more came with it than I had hoped, insofar as the end broke off the, uh, the pipe. But it looks like it has been repaired in the past already, so either way, um, where are you? Uh, either way, we're not, I'm not going to concern myself too much with it because uh, we do have uh, a vacuum pump on our new engine. So, um, we, if, you can, if you see down there, we already have one of the half shafts off, well, Decky does. Um, and then after that, the next thing to do will be to take the gear shift linkage off and a clutch slave, a slave cylinder. None of them are particularly difficult to get off anyway. The gear shift linkage comes off with two bolts, um, so we can do that afterwards as well too. So, um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll continue on, and then we're, we're we're actually already fairly close to lowering the engine out of the out of the van. So, um, progress has been actually quite uh, speedy on this process. Progress has been quick on this. Um, we basically have the half shafts off, gear shift linkage off. 
the clutch pipe is off there now and we have a piece of strapping going around the chain onto the engine which is hooked on between here and uh, down there there's a little, um, an MA threaded hole there which actually we were able to put the bolt through and then we can uh, we can take a bit of weight and start looking at our um, engine mounts. Now to, to, to my understanding there is there's a bolt, uh, there's a big nut there uh, that's that's her right and uh, obviously we have to hold the bolt on the other end so take that off and then there's one on the other side as well too which leaves the engine free to pivot down and then when the engine pivoted down on the forward end underneath the van is a um, is the forward mounted gearbox and then we can um, we can start uh, looking at taking that off uh, we'll probably get a trolley jack in under there to support the front end of the gearbox and then we can uh, we can figure out how we're actually going to roll this out. It's not going to be easy to be honest with you, but we'll figure it out. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the next step really is to get you guys set up on a tripod so you can stand back and watch. And yeah, if you, you know, you just do it and it just works. Myself and Decky are just talking, we're, we're comparing impact guns here. I uh, think it's a, it's, it's a bit of a Mickey measuring contest, but you look at Personally, my one is a... Uh, Nice little dinky one, his is for when you're done talking. Uh, the next step after his one is an oxyacetylene torch. So, <laughs> um, we're going to get you set up here. Um, unfortunately, uh, the weather was supposed to be nicer today. Today is actually St. Patrick's Day in Ireland. And um, we, uh, we're we in the garage because uh, coronavirus has basically shut the country. And uh, we are... Uh, yeah, we're using the opportunity just to do this kind of stuff, which is alright for me to be honest with you. So anyway, we're going to leave the camera rolling and let you have a look. Right. <clears throat> I think they're probably 21s. I have, a, I have some larger sockets there, I'll go and get them. Yeah. Well, I have a 21 deep and a 22 shallow here, so between, we might be able to just... Uh, you need a deep one. Alright. It's not 21 anymore. Anyway. Yeah, it's 22. Yeah, it's 22. I don't have a 22 deep, that's the problem. You get the... If we get a spanner, I'll get a spanner there to hold the nut. Get the bolt with the um, get the bolt head with the impact gun. That's not going to go in enough. I'll try my little dinky one then. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's on. That, that's on there, right? Oh, I was going on the nut. But it, yeah, but see, the thing is, I, I was thinking if we hold the nut with a spanner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then yeah, spanner yeah. the bolt yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. And at least that way, then you return the bolt, and it'll be likely to untread the engine mount. Engine 22 spanner. Yeah. Okay, so you go around the outside there, and uh, I will. Come here. Just to see. Fair enough. <clears throat> now you had the proper impact sockets as well too. I don't. That's a chrome socket. Because uh, I like to look dangerous. Okay. Ah uh, yeah. 18, 18 volt, five amp hour. Or did you walk over that one? Yeah, I, I did catch the weight. 
Yeah, yeah but it, yeah. it could still shift over to one side. No, that's right. Uh, so, we're pretty all right there now. Rain. Look, one thing you can always count on is the piss rain when you want to do anything like this. That's not going to go in there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, your socket is even another if it's a few mil longer. Well, hang on. Look, let's just break it with a ratchet, and then we can. Um, yeah. Once we get it, once we get it off, maybe uh, three or four turns. I'll get a, I'll get a breaker bar. Yeah, your socket actually fits on longer. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, but the problem is, is the fact that when you're putting that much torque on it, you can shatter the socket. It's only a Mickey Mouse socket. Yeah. Uh, where the hell is the bloody? Uh, Ah, uh, actually, it doesn't work with the gun in. Yeah. Because it's going too far. So, yeah. Socket and spanner. And Have you another spanner around this size? I've got a. We've got a breaker bar we can get onto the head of the bolt. Yeah. Put a spanner on the nut. That'll do us. This will there. Uh, Alright. We'll be able to get it. Get it moving. Yeah, yeah. It's always ways around these issues. Pull the jocks up there, you So it was. It was a, probably about 70 quid more expensive than my one then, so. But, um, There's a lot of weight on that mount. Yeah. The other one is loose. That's way. That's way yeah, well, let's just pump up the, uh, pump up the uh, engine. Excuse me, the engine hoist a bit. There you go. Okay, that, now that's, uh, that's lifted up that side a bit. Right, you're going to go through your hands for it, Poppins. Uh, I do fully expect this will drop. I'm going to just get a drift and just knock it through. Because uh, it will drop a little bit. Yeah. Here, just even the socket extension will work. First. Well, this is well, we weren't underneath the fucking thing. Uh, right, let's get the trolley jack and rectify this situation. Bollocks, anyway. Well, that's the quick way of removing an engine. Now, let's let's have a look at the slow and safe way of removing an engine. I'm trying to get the strap around. Enjoyable. We have to do an autopsy on that bolt hole. Yeah, we will. Fuck it now. Yeah. Mm. 
should have put a, a blue language uh, warning on the, on the video when we upload this one. Holy jays. further than that now I need to get that bolt in. Yeah well, see we can do that with a, a hammer and a drift. And see the thing is that the funny feeling the engine's gonna swing over that direction now and we Yeah <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. There's a lot of load on that bolt. Higher. Yeah I think it might it might not be a bad idea. Actually, lower the engine down, uh, uh, the, the back of the engine down onto something. It's going to change my gloves and my underpants. Side needs to come up quite a bit, so we need to do that with the trolley jack, yeah. uh, and then I might be able to get that out. But otherwise, as, as it stands, there's no way that's coming out. Ah, yeah, now 
Oh, there we go. Okay, jack her up. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's sitting on the engine mount on the other side there now. It's just held up on the, it's held up on the thing. Um, are you not underneath it? No. Yeah, we need to get that bolt out of there because that's going to just throw out the mud panel. Why don't we just take out that note there and then take off the whole shock mount? Yeah. Uh, that looks like it might be a 19. See that there? Yeah. Yeah, have you a 19, uh, 19 impact socket there, please? Have an impact socket in there, use it. I get an extension on it as well too, yeah. Thanks. Make sure that it doesn't run out of a uh, power. Uh, right, so that's our engine mount out of the way. Well, ain't that a thing? I think, to be honest with you, what I'll do is I'll actually replace both the engine mount and the um, bolt. It's just it's too risky. You do not want an engine falling out. Uh, okay, I'm going uh, to have a look now and see what we're doing with this. But you only need to go up a little bit on this now. Oh, you're lifting, what am I lifting? Uh, you're lifting the side of the engine, the trolley jack is on at the moment, but it needs to go over uh, to the left of the van a little bit. Just give it a little shove, I'm not underneath it, you're alright. Which is the left? 
passenger side. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah, just hold a little bit there, yeah. Trying to get it nearly back into alignment. Basically, yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, it's, I can see it's about an inch down, but... Okay, that's pretty good there now with that, right? So now, what we could do is we could get a smaller trolley jack and actually lower the front end of the gearbox down as well, too. Um, I need to get a... Uh, this is a little baby. You know what, I'm going to actually take, out, take off the whole front mount of the gearbox in the process, but... Uh, Sorry, just do, uh, have you the bar for it there? Alright. Alright. You may need a block or something, this doesn't go that high. It's really just a support. What is that? 15 mil volt. Sorry, people. <laughs> I was uh, sticking my head in the way. So I need a, an impact gun with uh, an impact gun with 13 mil socket on it, please. Yeah. Oh. I was getting you 15. I'm gonna get you bolt. Yeah. Well, I, I think the 13 mil should do the job because I'm actually gonna take the whole forward mount off. It needs to come out anyway. Thanks. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think it'll fit, to be honest with you, but... Uh, uh, it's only when I see the tape here, I realise what this was. Uh, no, I, look, I'll, I'll, I'll go and buy one, but thanks anyway, I appreciate the offer. Right, so there's the forward gearbox mount out now. Right, so if I lower down this trolley jack, the forward gear, the forward end of the gearbox should actually lower out. All right. I'll say well back. Yeah. Okay, hang on. No, people. See this, this this silver trolley here. I don't think it's going to hold. Okay, Jackie, you're going to need to. Let off. It, it's actually hanging on. Uh, it's actually hanging up on the engine crane, right? Yeah. But just very gently let off that snap-on trolley jack there, because that's actually holding it up against something as well too. So she's swinging over towards one side there, but it's actually free now, right? So if it just stop there now, right? Raise it back up again a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Now lower the trolley or lower the engine hoist a little bit. The only thing is I'm aware of the half shaft in here as well too now. How are you looking at your end there? Is it I'm there? just letting it down now there. Are you okay? Yeah, just try and level it off there. You'll see the... Okay, go on down a bit more. It's coming. 
And you'll need Plus to. The jack is catching it now. I think you'll need to pull the trolley jack over towards the yeah, there you go, now. I don't know, I don't know let this down, will it? You, you could, but I think it'll just swing over to one side. That's what's leveling it. So what am I doing? Just go, go between the two, the trolley jack and the engine hoist. Fucking soaked here. Uh, I think the trolley jack is pushing it away from me. Well, you have a better idea of your end there. What's uh, what's going on? So yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm stabilizing this end. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on. Don't do anything for that. The wiring needs to be disconnected here. There we go. The reverse light switch. Never thought of it. Now, do you want me to pull it towards me? Can you? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just the tiniest bit. I don't think there's overall weight on this jack anymore. Am I wrong? <laughs> yeah. Now, now, just be careful now because it is it's all over one side now. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've... So we... Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we might take the engine mounts off. The engine. Well, no, they're clear. It's the turbo uh, head. The, the, the uh, inlet manifold is up against the engine mount. So drag it over towards, uh, towards the, the driver's side of the van now. Find your fingers. Use the trolley jack. All right, okay. Ooh, there we go. Okay. Do you want me to come out and give you a hand up that end? Move your trolley over. The leg over. Uh huh? Yeah. Yeah, hold on. Okay. It's going to tilt to its side, is it? Yeah, it will do, yeah. I think it'll center on the gearbox. Well, it needs to anyway to clear the van. Are we okay? Yeah. Now the gearbox is actually, the, the front end of it is on the ground, but that's all right. We'll, we'll make it work. Okay. It's going to fall over. What's that? Sorry. Uh, that is just, the cooling pad is wrapped around it. So half shaft, there we go. Okay. Right, now, so. So it's just a matter of what happens there. Right. <laughs> Uh, I think what we need to do is let the let the engine hoist off all together now, you know that? Yeah, yeah. Just let it sit down because it's on the ground now. Like it's free. Yeah. Well, just still take a bit of weight there. Take take it off all together. We can jockey it around ourselves. Okay. No, it's on the trolley, the silver trolley I spoke of a few minutes ago. <laughs> now. Right. Well, the engine's out now. It's a little tire, isn't it? Well, it well, might be oh, hey. Jesus, I think it's actually all right. Yeah, we might be able to heal the engine over a little bit more and actually get it out from underneath. Let's get the engine clear now. Right. The new engine is going to be great for. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's it. Let me get a video of where this one's going to go viral, I can assure you. <laughs> what the fuck? Come on, don't tell me it's going to just fell off. Oh. <laughs> Made to bloody measure. And the silver trolley's holding up. Holy shit. Well, all it has to do is hold up until it gets into the garage and then it can fuck off. <laughs> do you want to just keep going with it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're, we're in the clear now, anyway. So where are we heading from? Uh, I suppose there. Behind the camera. <laughs> it's oranges. 
Hang on a second then. The other option is we put it, put it on the crane and lift it in. What do you think would be better? I don't know. It's, 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 it might be better than better. Yeah. Look, it's crane. Least, we can assess the situation once it's in the garage and put the engine mounts onto the other engine. Do you want to say it's pretty crazy? As in like... Yeah. Yeah, let me just disconnect this. Uh, I'll get the, get the camera moved back a bit. If you guys move back here so you can see what we're doing. Yeah, no. Alright, so where's the chain gone? There it is there. Right, we don't need to scrap for this now. We can, we can just lower it down enough to actually pick it up. Do you want? No. You want to extend it? Uh, that's out to full extent. Huh? That's out to full extent. Oh. If we lift this up here, it's, uh, we can't do it this way, you have to turn it around there. Well, no, it's only just to get it up off the ground. I mean, I, I, like oh. I said, it, it's never going to be up very high. Like. Oh, no, that's fair enough. I'm just it's going to pull all pull back in the gearboxes. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop for a second. Loop around the bolt head. I'll let it break in the bolt. We do not want another broken bolt. Okay, go on ahead there. Okay, we're up in the air now. Right. This engine, this, this little dolly form, is actually get the engine out from underneath the van, and it did it served its purpose. Yeah. Right. I'll pull the engine if you want to give that a shot. <laughs> now it's, it's hot up on these wheels here. One at a time. General. Mm -hmm. What a what an absolute fuck up. <laughs> um anyway it's out. So uh yeah we have our um we have the uh AAZ engine and gearbox out now. Um so uh yeah hopefully putting the new uh, the new engine back in won't um, won't be such a deal. <laughs> But um, I think what I might do is actually maybe just soldier on a little bit and actually do do some more of the work. Maybe put the engine mounts onto the new engine because we have engine mount here and the engine mount on the other side need to go on. These are where the exhaust actually bolt onto. And um, yeah, we do that. Um, yeah, sure. I think uh, we'll get set up here anyway. And we'll do, we'll we'll keep going. So I need to get a new, uh, a new shock mount for the engine and uh, a new bolt to hold the... Uh, uh, okay. So that, that, this engine mount will actually go over this side of this new engine. Now anyway, I'm going to give it a clean before I put it on. Though. Here, let's pull it over a bit. Oh yeah, that was no, it's nice. Not yet. Why would VW make it easy for you? Be, if it was, I'd be surprised. Alright, but here you go now. I'm gonna give these a little bit of a give this a little bit of a wash. some stage. For what now I can't remember to tell you the truth. 
What do you reckon? I'll get, a, get this done, get the engine mounts on, and I'm going to take the lift around and give it a start. I haven't, uh, haven't started it in ages. My sockets are actually in the third drawer down, but there should be a rail there uh, with all the half inch drive sockets on it that I took out. Exchanger needs to be turned on the new engine as well too. See this part here? Oh. Yeah, because that's actually those pipes are coming out here. Um, it's not a problem. Worst case scenario, we can use the one off this engine. Um, ah, bollocks! I just realised though the implications of that mean that also I now I now need to redo the bloody turbo oil, tur uh, turbo oil feed. I think unless that swivels independently, that oh maybe it does. That would be good if it did. Yeah, well, it would have to actually. I'm just looking because the yeah that goes on there, and then that that's actually just otherwise you'd be turning the whole flange. See that there? That that's where if this was a petrol engine, that'd be where the distributor drive would be. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 
Why do you need to change it yourself? What's... But see, these pipes are coming out to the side there and coming out to the... Well, the Where do they go? Uh, they go on to the um, auxiliary oil pump, or sorry, the auxiliary coolant pump, which is a little electrical add on the uh, bulkhead in the van. And oh, what's it in this engine? Uh, oh, I don't know. I mean, see, I never saw the say at Alhambra, so... Um, it's not a major problem, oh, it's a case of doing this. It's just one pump, one pipe. It's, no, what it, what has to happen is this comes off, you don't do, uh, if I, as far as I remember, you don't do a nut that's up there and probably get a channel locks or something like that and then this pivots around. That there is, that that whole cooling pipe needs to be, needs to come off as well too. So we'll have to do that and, uh, yeah. See, it's amazing, like, a simple thing like that, it's, it's amazing how something like that grows legs and you end up, what would have been a simple job taking feckin' ages. Um, anyway, look at. I'm sorry, but just remember that's only on a tiny, uh, only buns in a tiny bit of timber. Uh, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> We've had enough engine drops for one day, I think. There probably won't be oil above that. They might be okay to take it off and put it back on again. Like this filter in here. Yeah, uh, well, the, yeah, the, the, no, there, should, there shouldn't be, it's just trying to get the Jesus thing off. It's stitched. I put, my, I put it on. Oh. That was needlessly tight. Uh, get, a, get a little patch can. Take it off quickly. It's just spilling out of the filter is all that's happening. Yeah. yeah, so that needs to be loosened. I need to take those two hose clips off. So I'll get the channel locks and take the hose clips off first. It's great now having all this space to work in the engine bay and I can I can get it uh, get it ready to take the new engine. I want to tidy it all up. And, Get the wiring all sorted out as well too in the process. Yeah, see that'll come off easy enough. I've got a twist in it there already. Don't need pilots over there. <laughs> I'm not throwing anything like that out though, because apart from anything else, there's hose clips on that which we may well be able to use in the future. Here. You've changed dipsticks as well. Yeah. That shouldn't be. A, like I say it shouldn't be a big deal. It probably will be. There'll probably be something difficult about it. Find the patience. I don't think it's going to. But you see, what we might be able to do is to turn, take it off altogether and put it back on 90 degrees out. Yeah, so we can let's just let that off altogether. Okay. Yeah, there's a, it's up against the nut that holds the thing on. Okay, and then that just goes back on like that. Wasn't overly complicated. Of course, I'd say that now, and just 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 for my tenants to leak. <laughs> now 
Now before we put the oil filter on, we need to put the engine mount on. Do you want to give it a bit of a rub with your gizzer? <laughs> yeah, it might not be a bad idea. I'm just trying to see how the how the uh, what do you call it, the ditch stick actually comes out. I think it's only just pushed in in this as well too, but it just doesn't want to go anywhere. <clears throat> now, yeah, see, so you just undo the, there's a, uh, yeah, that yeah. cap head bolt there comes out and then the whole thing comes out. going to have to change the uh, yeah that's a different shape as well too so the thermostat hasn't even has to be changed Might be, they might be beside the engine bay in the van there actually. Yeah, thing holding my trying best cover on here as well, which needs to be loosened. Yeah. Snips. Again, I think it's in the back of the engine, uh, the back yeah. of the... Yeah. Coffee or coffee? Uh, love a coffee, actually, please. Yeah. I'll have one, please, yes. Thank you. Tea or coffee? Coffee. How do you take it? Um, no milk and a half spoon of sugar and a lot of coffee. A half spoon of sugar, oh, and, sugar. Okay. and a lot of coffee. <laughs> Two spoons of coffee. Alright, I like mine strong as well too, so... Now, that's now cool. Mr. Jizzer. You jizzer, and I'll own the jizzer. <laughs> Alright, leave that there for a second. We're a cleaning pile. Once I can get that bloody thing out. Um. How does the engine mount go on? There's only two bolt holes here. Where was the, where was the third hole? Uh, there's one there, one, uh, uh, the, uh, down below the dipstick is one, there's another one over here, there's another one there. Ah, look at that. Ah. The sneaky little bastards. Ah, a wire fitting. Yeah, they, 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 yeah. I was like, oh no! Someone told me there's no bolt hole for the engine mount. That would have been a catastrophe. I better bring the camera over here and let, uh, let our uh, so thousands of loyal viewers join in. That's some timing or camshaft. That, that, uh, that is the engine speed sensor is what that is. So, what we're basically doing here is, this, uh, this, these two pipe uh, spigots were over here, and uh, the filter was in the way, and now also, if you have a look here, there's a bolt hole here, uh, you can't see it, um, hang on, so I can see where I'm pointing the camera, 
Okay, so there's a bolt hole here, bolt hole here, but what they did was they have a little wire clip stuck into the third bolt hole. I'm also trying to take the dipstick out as well too because the dipstick actually has a much longer thing which comes up over and comes out the front and you can check the, the oil behind the reg plate on the uh, on the van which is quite handy. It means you don't have to open the engine bay every time you want to change it or check it uh, either actually. Um, so uh, yeah, that's what uh, that's what we're up to now. So um, really all it was a case of doing to, to move this around was uh, there's a note underneath here Loosen the nut, take this off, pop it back on 90 degrees around, tighten the nut back up, and we put the fil and that's where the filter goes, and then the filter will go on afterwards. What it is, it's a, it's an oil um, an oil water heat exchanger, so it it uh, warms up uh, warms up the coolant and cools down the oil or vice versa, as necessary, and just helps the uh, transfer of heat between the coolant and the oil. So. Um, Kind of a handy little gizmo, prone to leakage. Um, if you find that you have water in your oil on a, an older VW diesel engine, uh, the first thing to do is to check that before you go worrying about your head gasket because it may not be the head gasket at all. The other thing as well I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to change the thermostat housing because this is the type of pipe fitting we have on here and it's completely wrong for our purposes. So that has to come off and we'll put the, the one that's on the uh, AAZ engine onto that as well too. Or if you have a look over here, this is the AAZ engine. Um, the fitting is down there and um, yeah it's a lot more bare looking because there's not all of the electronics on this engine that would have been on the uh, that are on the other one um, and old school mechanical fuel injection pump as well too so um, yeah so that's our uh, engine and gearbox assembly anyway I'll be um, parting out the engine and selling the gearbox as a, uh, as a separate entity and the start motor will be going begging as well too, so we'll be putting up some for sale ads in various different places for people on car forums and that. Anybody is uh, looking for something and they're in Ireland or the UK, um, you know, they're willing for me to ship them over, message me and I will organise that with you. Um, so uh, yeah, anyway, uh, so basically what we're going to do now is we're going to bolt the engine mounts, which uh, one of which is there and the other one is over there. Uh, we're going to uh, clean them up, bolt them onto this engine change the dipstick over, change the uh, the coolant um, uh, the, the coolant outlet from the stat housing and um, yeah, I think that'll do us. Decky here, who's been my lovely assistant for the day, has one of these engines at home as well too. So, of course we had to give, give this one a start. It's been a few months since it's been started and she's ticking over grand. My intention is to be able to run various different belt driven accessories off it and have like a custom sort of accessory shoe that we can uh, like if you want a compressor one day, a generator the next day and a water pump the following day, you can swap out the accessories and run anything you want off it. I mean that was the intention of these engines, so that's what I want to do with it. I will get back to it at some stage though. Okay, so there's still a bit to be done in the garage. Decky's headed off there now anyway, so um, I'm going to keep tipping away for a little bit longer and just get a bit more done. Um, I feel like I'm actually making progress here. Um, one of the things I didn't say actually was unfortunately the flywheel and uh, clutch back in place, the whole lot has to come off the new engine. The reason being is that I don't want to mention, you remember from previous video, any of you who are watching, um, that the backing plate was actually rubbing on the back of the flywheel. Now I thought that that might have been because of the fact that the uh, the um, adapter plate wasn't fully down home and the uh, the backing plate was actually just sitting out. It turns out it isn't that. Um, I did a bit of reading and a bit of talking to people who know more about these things than I do and what it is is actually the uh, the backing plate for the transverse mounted engine is different than it is for the um, longitudinally mounted engine which is seems to be part of the course in this whole job. So uh, I've got the new uh, the new backing plate uh, arriving and um, that will be uh, that'll be here hopefully this week. Um, apart from that uh, what I need to do now is I need to start looking at um, the uh, yeah engine mounts, the dipstick, the um, coolant pipe work um, basically making the new engine look as similar to the um, old engine as possible. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's going to be some feat, but uh, we will um, we'll, we'll keep going. Um, so next thing I'm going to do is, I think what I will do is I'll actually take the um, take the thermostat housing off the bottom of the old engine 
and this uh, this pipe that comes up along here as well too and uh, swap them over there's a uh, slight differences on the on the new engine there's a see this little takeoff here on the the new engine so we don't need that but uh, that's a small job uh, one of the handier little jobs to do so we may as well do it well folks, as it stands, my garage is an absolute disaster, but I did actually accomplish anything uh, uh, quite a bit today. Um, as much with the help of uh, with Decky coming over as well too, uh, I couldn't have actually done that job without uh, without somebody's help, to be honest with you. I thought I could, but um, it was definitely worth having somebody else here. So anyway, um, this is the new engine now, and one of the two engine mounts is on, that's this lad here, okay? I just gave it a light like, clean up, I didn't go too mad on it. And uh, swapped around the um, the oil water heat exchanger, changed the pipe spigot down there, um, and uh, yeah, got a few bits and pieces done there on it as well too. So, so that's a uh, so that's encouraging anyway. The the other engine mount still has to go on the other side, but I have to kind of lift the engine up a bit to put it on because the engine's over on its side, if you know what I mean. And uh, this is the old engine here. It served us well, to be fair. So I can't uh, criticise it too much. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, it probably still does have a bit of life left on it, but I wanted to change. So uh, and I'm also a glutton for punishment. But um, yeah, so basically, I think I'm gonna call it here. God Almighty! There we go. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna call it here and um, pick this up again another day. I have a few bits ordered there now. Anyway, the cable, uh, the cable shift mechanism is coming in from Tim Shettle in Ultimate Engineering. He shipped that. There's the new. Um, backing plate to go onto the new engine as well too so I can refit the flywheel then I'll get a clutch alignment tool uh, fit the gearbox to the um, to the engine and then we can start building up the whole assembly before putting it into the van and uh, I will be recruiting some help again for that job uh, you saw how badly things went today anyway I mean that could have been a lot worse um, it, the bolt uh, actually broke where the, the chain was going through it so yeah, anyway, just basically don't go underneath an engine that's been supported by a chain. I know that myself anyway, so I didn't, and um, made sure Decky wasn't as well too. So, um, in the end, it doesn't seem to... to there wasn't any damage done really, aside from a, bro a bent bolt, uh, which I will replace, and I'll replace the two engine mount um, shock absorbers as well too. Um, so uh, we can um, uh, be sure that they're 100%. Uh, but yeah, look, thanks a lot, thanks a lot for watching and um, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll uh, pick this up in a future video.